Welcome to another session of our management and leadership lecture and class. And after talking about a lot about um, analysis of the external environment within the framework of the pest analysis and looking at the micro and macro environment. And uh, we uh, extensively look at how it is to manage in a global environment. What, what kind of factors do have an impact here? And Uh, what is the impact, for example, of culture and also of national culture on the corporate culture and on managerial activities within the organizations and within the uh, corporations. And now we arrived at uh, a very, very important topic in today's world, um, which is corporate social responsibility and also ethics and ethical leadership and all this kind of also corporate governance uh, compliance uh, falls into this kind of uh, into this kind of section. Now, what is uh, social responsibility? We do here. It is um, so. It's basically I'm trying in parallel. Um, so it's basically here. Um, it's focused on ethics, and it's focused on corporate social responsibility here. Ethics and corporate so so social responsibility are the main pillars, or is the um, underlying prerequisite of uh, this whole social responsibility topic. Ethics is uh, the study of morality and standards of conduct. Um, and of course, that is uh, that differs also that differs from from uh, country to country. So what is what is what is uh, morally um, uh, appropriate um, kind of behavior and kind of conduct. And as we can see in today's world, uh, in, in particular, There are dilemmas arising from conflicts between ethical standards between countries, most evident in uh, certain kind of employee practices. We discussed that before. Um, of course, we have different kind. If you look at the pest analysis and we said pest is about looking at the political, economic, social, technological uh, factors that do have an impact on the management and on the uh, uh, organizations as a whole. Uh, of course, politics or political regulations, mean, meaning, for example, labor laws or environmental laws. They have a, a, a profound impact on the business of the, uh, of the entities, of the corporations. And there's sometimes a dilemma um, because what we said before, I'm uh, trying to activate the whiteboard. Um, there's every kind of organization is basically <clears throat> torn between three aspects. Or, so these are conflicting um, goals, which are interrelated, um, but however, they are conflicting. So you cannot accomplish every kind of dimension at the same time to the same kind of extent. One is um, economics. Economics. So, so this is all the questions about Uh, profitability, this is about turnover, this is about liquidity, this is about return on investment. So this is following the economic principle here. And then we have um, environment, environment. So this is about resourcefulness. This is about um, avoidance of too much waste and pollution. And then we have the social factors. So this is about employee satisfaction. This is about also uh, being affected, of course, by, uh, by labor laws etc etc and every kind of organization is is uh, in this kind of triangle um, we can we can just actually yesterday I've seen that uh, I was reading an article in the newspapers and this article was saying that more and more companies are adapting for example to pro produce masks um, in order to fight off uh, the corona uh, the corona crisis so in the framework of the pandemic um, companies prior um, to the To the crisis having produced i don't know um some kind of textiles or t-shirts and they start uh they started producing masks but now they're because of the strict european and german environmental laws some of the companies they argued in this article uh we are not able in the future um to produce the masks in germany any any longer because we cannot meet the criteria for resourcefulness production which are laid upon us by the european Euro union so we have to uh, um, we have to outsource that 
We cannot do that in Germany, although maybe this is wanted by politics, but um, we are not uh, allowed to do that because, for example, in the production process, we have too, too much uh, microplastics, for example, going into the masks. And this is by, by German legislation. This is, not, uh, this is not possible. However, it is possible to produce the masks abroad and then import them. So just looking at this example, um, that, that um, imposes upon us this uh, kind of a dilemma between and the conflicts, not only between the different kind of ethical standards, but between all the three dimensions um, of the managerial triangle here. Uh, but of course, most obvious, this is in employment practices um, and different kind also of environmental protection. We mentioned that before because in Germany uh, you have to comply with uh, stri more strict regulations uh, compared to Bangladesh, compared to uh, Asia in general, compared to China. Um, so out of that we have uh, an increasing awareness for CSR, corporate social responsibility. The question is, is a corporation, is it socially responsible or to how to which degree is it socially responsible uh, and we are discussing the two kind of dimensions um, on the next slide here this is closely of course related to ethics actions of a firm to benefit society beyond requirements of law and data interests of firms so that's the question so is there any kind of um, uh, additional uh, objectives that should be met or that should be expected by organizations to uh, to be met apart from just uh, being compliant with the law. Of course, that is <laughs> that is a prerequisite and that, that is, of course, uh, not a big thing that uh, companies are complying in compli operating in compliance with the law because this is a minimum <laughs> that is a legal requirement. But the question is, is there any additional um, obligation, responsibility that we can expect from the companies or that companies should exhibit. The problem is that um, CSR here involves always taking voluntary action. So there is um, there is no obligation to those companies because the obligation is already covered in the legal requirements and that is more a compliance thing. So CSR concerns include the working conditions as well as the environmental aspects of corporate activities and organizational activities. <clears throat> Here are the two views of, um, of management thinkers about CSR. Um, and it hasn't, hasn't changed much, but still we have those kind, two kinds of views. One is the classical view. The classical view is the only responsibility of an organization is to maximize profits and create financial return because that is in the interest of the shareholders who own the corporation and of course also if a corporation does well for example they are I don't know efficiently managed and effectively managed uh, and they sell a lot of products they increase profitability they're able to um, to maintain workers uh, they're able to increase their salary they're able to um, um, that they're able to ensure that the workers uh, that work for the organizations can can spend a living, uh, can uh, can feed their families or can buy a house or whatever. And that is the classical view. That is the classical view. So the only responsibility is to maximize profits, to to uh, to operate efficiently and effectively within, of course, legal obligations and requirements, so to be compliant. But that's it. But there is no additional um, actions of the corporation being needed. This is covered more in the more what we call socio-economic view. So this complies or this comprises that there is a social responsibility of the organizations and corporations that is going beyond just increasing profitability and turnover. But the organizations, they have to focus on ways which improve the welfare of the society they're operating in so whether it's, it's it's a national one or it's a local one or on an international basis 
And this is kind of what we what we uh, what, what we already discussed in this um, systems approach when we discussed what is the difference between an open system and a closed system. Corporations, in this view, are not independent entities, only responsible to stockholders, but they are responsible to uh, the uh, entire com co compartment or portfolio of stakeholders. So to all the interest groups, so to media, to politics, to greater society, to suppliers, to customers, to everybody, basically. So in this view, companies have a moral responsibility to larger society to become involved in social, legal and political issues. So in this in this respect, also um, the companies have uh, to to move to another uh, step or have to take another step, uh, for example, to fight off climate change uh, in addition to legal requirements. Now, code of ethics, um, code of ethics, what is it? It is a formal statement, so it's normally it's written down. You can read about the code of ethics of the Deutsche Bank or Daimler or Beiersdorf. Uh, it's a formal statement of an organization's prime and key values and the ethical and moral rules they expect their employees to follow. Uh, could be dependable or uh, being a dependable organizational citizen. Don't do anything unlawful, of course. Uh, so that is very, very gen generic, all right? Be good to customers. But uh, sometimes it's very, very specific that um, entities, they are having a, a code of ethics being written down and they explicitly state what to do or what not to do. Um, so if you want to use this effectively, you have to develop uh, a written and formal statement of these kind of values and you have to communicate that internally and also externally you have to pay attention when hiring employees that you also we talked about that before that you hire for culture and for the cultural fit here have all levels of management reform the importance of the ethics code and the organization's commitment to the code and what you have to do is you have to reprimand, so to punish and discipline those people also openly who break the code. If you don't do, of course, you don't need a written code. And, and, and of course, people are cannot uh, are, don't take uh, the code you've written down as a formal uh, kind of a statement. Don't take it seriously. So that, uh, of course, every company is saying, oh, we are complying with the, with the law or we are, we are, we are CSR um, oriented or focused. But um, of course, you see that and um, when it comes to the perception of how certain kind of companies are handling crisis, for example, how the German car manufacturers behave during the diesel uh, crisis, which we have. Um, you need to, of course, also what we call um, lead by example. So top management uh, executives in the organizations, they have to be uh, functioning. They have to provide a good role model by being ethical and honest of, of, um, at all times, of course, tell the truth. Don't hide or manipulate information, for example, um, admit failure. So that is, um, I think that is one of the key things here, uh, this admittance of, uh, of failure that is often not done by the organization. So sometimes they're just trying to, 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 um, to, um, to hide it or to to uh, yeah to, to to minimize it for example uh, one famous uh, incident which happened was uh, when uh, there was one Scandinavian um, car tester and he wrote uh, more than 20 years ago he was uh, writing a review review on the a class coming from Mercedes and, th and that became famous as the so-called egg test and he said he found out that um, if you try to uh, avoid collusion with an elk, <laughs> then uh, the car can can uh, can collapse and can fall onto the side. And what was the reaction of Mercedes? Um, they 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 try to discredit him, so uh, they try to demote him in kind in kind of ser uh, seriosity in in, in times uh, in, uh, in in relation to his 
ex expertise. Uh, so they didn't admit that the car is a problem, but they first tried to put it on the uh, on the tester or on the reviewer of the magazine. And uh, then other um, people found out that the car indeed had the problems. And then Mercedes in the end had to apologize. Uh, that is, of course, the worst thing that uh, that can happen. And also what um, what happened uh, during the uh, crisis of the uh, German car manufacturers uh, predominantly, but there were also others. Um, like I was just mentioning during the diesel uh, diesel gate here. So how is, how is the reaction of top management? Do they do they look for excuses? Do they want to hide something, or do they openly admit failure? Because that is belonging to this uh, kind of CSR, to this more uh, socio-economic view of uh, of CSR. Then reward employees. Don't punish them, but reward employees who have behaved ethically and punish those who do not. And sometimes it takes too long for corporations to follow up here. And also, um, and you, you could see that uh, happening during the last crisis here, um, that uh, those people haven't been prosecuted quickly enough. Um, protecting employees, so-called whistleblowers, who bring to light unethical behavior to raise ethical issues. So that is that is that is what what I what I understand with leadership with ethical or with ethical focus. Um, now let's uh, that is a short uh, chapter basically, um, because it is worthwhile to uh, to discuss it in in more depth. So there is not much theory behind that here, but the question is in particular in today's world, um, what is your view? Um, what should management do? What is the responsibility of management? And uh, we have the um, in research get more and more the the feedback or the understanding that Generation Z um, and Generation Y, so they are paying more uh, a greater emphasis. Uh, they are putting uh, on the uh, CSR activities of uh, of corporations. The question is, and now I'm I'm polarizing a bit. I'm I'm a bit provocative now. Um, if you're a company such as Nike or Adidas or let's just take the sports apparel manufacturers, are they are they behaving unethical in an unethical way? Unethically, if they manufacture, for example, on the Philippines, um, producing at low cost and then selling at a high price, is this unethical behavior? Uh, I was I'm, I'm asking, please um, write down in the comments. Is that an unethical behavior in in, in your in your uh, in your opinion? Um, producing, for example, in Bangladesh, um, it is a globalized it is a globalized world, of course, and they are just uh, so they are compliant with the law. But however, they are um, of course not. Um, now, if you uh, please do this uh, at home, Google, and I was mentioning that before. Uh, look for um, on Google or look on YouTube specifically on Nike sweatshops, for example, or just type in sweatshops and you see how a uh, certain kind of uh, sports apparel are being produced in factories in uh, predominantly in Asia. Um, we have that in uh, Bangladesh, but also on the Philippines. And of course, there's a different kind of production standard. Let's put it this way and different kind of legal standards. Um, so uh, in those kind of countries, you can easily pollute, uh, pollute rivers. Um, you can exploit people. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, reduce salary of people, and, and they have different rights, of course, in those kind of regions. So, is this unethical? You, you you're saying I, I'm only reading. Oh, it's not. Why not? Why is it not unethical? Because it's compliant with the law. It's not ethical when they hire children to pollute the environment. Yeah, but but companies companies are doing that. And uh, I, I was mentioning I was mentioning the example and the documentary. I was mentioning that over and over again, the price of the blue jeans, the price of the blue jeans. It's not a, it's a German documentary uh, and it's in German. But you can see how jeans are manufactured in um, in Bangladesh. And um, the jeans are coming from big brands such as Zara. But they're also coming from uh, from uh, Kik and also Mustang. So also 
branded genes, so more expensive genes. And I was mentioning that before, um, the genes they are producing there, it just costs about $3 to produce a pair of genes, which sells later at a price of 90. And the rivers are polluted there, and the fishermen, so they, 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 they're, they're in big troubles because the rivers are polluted and they cannot um, uh, carry out their, their professions and um, there's dust all over the place and garbage, etc, etc. So this is, of course, not um, resourceful. And this is a different kind of understanding of environmental protection as we are pursuing the Western world. And being a Western company, for example, Adidas and Nike, Under Armour, those kind of uh, manufacturers. Is that then an unethical behavior? Is that when it comes to the um, when it comes to the socioeconomic view, it's unethical. When it comes to the classical view, it's not. So what is the right answer? And and here it becomes difficult. There is no right answer, right? Um, companies, uh, Terminal is writing, companies are not just come and grab the area and build their factory. So you may also argue what the companies are doing when they are manufacturing, for example, in, uh, in those um, less developed countries. They are providing jobs to people and it's, uh, it's not a kind of wealth, but they're providing jobs to people, allowing those kind of people to feed their family. But at the same time, of course, they're polluting. Uh, the air, they're polluting the rivers. So the question is, how you balance that? From um, a profitability uh, kind of perspective, this is of course the maximization of profits. They are very much focusing on the top of the uh, of the triangle, because the most expensive pairs of uh, Nike trainers they sell for about I don't know I'm not talking about limited, but um, normal normal pairs of trainers they sell for about one hundred eighty dollars. Um, same with Adidas and manufacturing cost is about five dollars or the manufacturing cost of manufacturing an iPhone in uh, in China it's just one one dollar it's just a labor cost I mentioned that before one dollar so then there is ninety nine dollars roughly or hundred dollars material cost and they're selling it for eight hundred nine hundred thousand um, dollars is that unethical or is it just the maximization of profits and is the maximization of profits unethical? And here you can see that this is very, very, very difficult to answer. So everybody has to uh, has, of course, uh, a certain kind of um, individual perception of what is what is ethically correct or what is um, not what is compliant, because we 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 know about that. But that is the um, that is the thing. I don't know. Have you ever? punished a company have you um sanctionized a company so like we say okay i found out that this company does that and then you refrain from buying the products of this kind of corporation maximizing profits uh Hanura is writing as long as they are not ha uh, harming anyone or they're not happy but but they are somehow negatively impacting uh impacting people because the fishermen for example in those kind of regions they have a, they have a problem they have an issue so that is a question so probably it would be good uh, so we don't need to record all this kind of stuff but but i make it very very short now uh, i just want to polarize a little bit be a bit thought provoking i end the recording here but we can discuss and then openly um outside of the uh, outside of the records um okay Thanks very much. Uh, so we end the session here for the social responsibility and ethics, uh, but we'll discuss um, in a couple of minutes. Thanks. Bye bye.